Good morning. Uh, uh, it's a pleasure to, to be with you here today. And uh, the first of all is thanks to, to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Jesus Alonso, and I'm in charge of the Inner Source Office, uh, office at uh, Banco Santander for Europe. Uh, and within Europe, uh, we consider Spain, Portugal, the UK, and Poland. Uh, before this job, I have collaborated in, in different projects in the field of the digital transformation at Banco Santander during the last five years. The Inner Source Commons Foundation uh, has invited me to, to participate in this session to share uh, with you the approach and, and the work uh, that we have been doing at, at the bank in the recent months. And therefore, the, the, object, the objective is, uh, of this talk is to tell you a, a little and, and a summarized way why we from Santander considered to, to, to start applying this way of working, uh, in what context, and, and the progress and difficult, uh, several difficulties that we have been having. So um, I'm going to I'm going to try to, to be brief. Also, the grouping all the work that we have done in, in 15 minutes is, is complicated, but I'll, I'll try. I'll do my best. My best. My presentation is structured in, in four blocks. Uh, first of all, uh, why in source in Santander? In what context uh, is it born? Secondly, uh, the preliminary analysis that has prepared uh, with the help of our Vitelia partners that uh, surely many of you will know. Uh, third, uh, what is the work and plan that we are executing? And, and finally, summarize or try to summarize where we are and what are the main advances and, and milestones uh, we have accomplished. So, well, uh, as you know, Santander Bank is, is, is one of the of the main, main financial entities in, in the world by market capitalization and, and is present in, in the main world markets. At the beginning of 2021, uh, we established a new organizational structure uh, that brings together the four European countries and, and whose objectives is to obtain efficiencies and, and to reduce costs. Uh, in this sense, from the technology and operations area, uh, we determined that uh, we had to find products or, or services that were being used in, in all geographies uh, in Europe and, and with the goal of, of avoiding building the same four times. Um, we chose four technology services considered strategic and after analyze, analyzing how to carry it out, uh, we detected that build these products uh, would be more efficient through uh, open source processes in the organization, or what is the same, applying, trying to apply inner source. And we chose the mobile banking app for individuals as the pioneer uh, project uh, that will be help us to, to promote the, this inner source way of working in, in the bank. Uh, and, and in fact, in fact, uh, this is a challenge in Santander because we have been a company that has traditionally worked in closed silos. The hierarchical structure uh, has always been very marked. Uh, the sense of ownership is high. It's a bank where one country often doesn't know how another works. Uh, and in this way, we set the strategic objectives that uh, implied moving, as, as you see in the picture, from left to right uh, in order to, to, to be more open, uh, more transparent, more collaborative, etc. because uh, without it, uh, we wouldn't implement uh, in our thoughts. So second point, um, the first thing uh, we determined uh, was uh, to uh, was to do an assessment of the project and, and the, on the, of the project of the one project and the teams uh, in which we wanted to, to implement in our source. No, the objective was to determine where they were, how the teams were working, uh, how they were organized, and, and also what barriers uh, we were going to find to develop this new way of working. Uh, and here uh, we found some problems that many of you we will surely recognize, <laughs> for example, the first one was the language. Uh, all communications and, and project documentation should be in English, and, and many people uh, didn't feel comfortable outside their, their language. Um, for example, uh, in addition, changing from using one tool to another with potentially different uh, processes uh, used, used to generate fear. Also, many people showed us that, in, in general, it was not easy for them to, to, get, off of, to get out of, of the comfort zone and, and change their day-to-day -day work. Another barrier, for example, we saw that usually in the project, uh, speed uh, was more important than quality. And, and it was more important 
to check deadlines, for example, for, for the roadmap instead of, of ex executed well. Many people also so, showed us and that it would be it would be difficult for them to maintain communication with developers from other countries, other geographies, and, and their way of working. Uh, also, uh, and I, everything is related to to the fear of change. Okay, but uh, there was an important layer of, of roles that had no motivation to improve or, or to evolve uh, their work, uh, since in many cases the developer layer was the last link in, in the chain, and they didn't have relevance in, in the process. So and finally, and, and in general, at the bank, the, the source code uh, is considered a confidential asset, and, and this could generate problems uh, when, opening, uh, when opening it in, in the organization. Um, after analyzing those barriers, we study the, the maturity of the teams, both technical and the business team, and also product owners, uh, and see how much it uh, would cost us to, to, to reach the goals in, in matters of transparency, collaboration, community, and governance. And at the same time, we, we determine a, a series of capacities or, or skills related to, to these four spheres. Um, and that were essential, and that were essential to, to develop if you wanted to implement this, uh, this, this way of working in, in a right way. And from here, uh, the assessment ended with uh, what would be our ideal source or, or ideal inner source model uh, at the bank, or what we wanted to have in, in the medium on, and long term. And this ideal model was exposed in, in three main areas. Everything, first of all, everything related to the organizational structure and roles. Here we established, for example, a contributional contribution model, trusted committers, governance forums, etc. Secondly, develop uh, or in some case evolve the, the inner source processes, contribution, code review, CICD, working with branches, etc. Uh, and also a, a key area is, is the third is the definition and, and setup of the of the platform and tools. So uh, once uh, the assessment was finished, uh, what really started was the implementation work. So the first thing we did uh, was to formalize a program office uh, that uh, would ensure the monitoring of the initiative, the plan, and to be the facilitator. The main mission of, of this program office is to assist and, uh, and support uh, projects, uh, in this case, the one project as a pilot on that path, um, uh, in the, on that path of this, to the new way of working, no? ensuring that, that the plans are accomplished. Uh, but also uh, we have uh, other tasks such as, uh, for example, the training of specific roles or establishing uh, models and methodologies, the data collection and exploitation in, in order to, to obtain KPIs, uh, analyze if the processes are working properly, and also specific issues or topics uh, with other areas of, of the bank, for example, uh, legal matters, uh, cybersecurity, etc. Uh, from from the program office, uh, we set a, a high-level plan for 12 months. In it, uh, we established uh, we established three major levels, uh, with a fourth level that involves the escalation phase to other projects, <clears throat> and which will will come later. Uh, the first phase is uh, what we call the platform ready, uh, which consists. On, on preparing and setting up the platform. Second, the, the getting started the stage. Uh, once we have the platform ready uh, to be able to start developing the way of working in, in an incipient way, okay? And third, uh, working in the open, that is once a minimum level of maturity has been established, where developers already work through a uh, standardized uh, code review and contribution processes, debut kit and, and evolve. And last, as I said before, uh, once the first project is considered uh, mature, export or try to export the, the methodology to, to other initiatives. Uh, well, in each of these work phases, we have established five main work streams, uh, where everyone, uh, of, uh, where everyone, uh, every one of, of these steps are that are taken, or everything that is built. Uh, such as software, uh, documentation, meetings, etc., has to be open and public for the whole organization. <clears throat> Obviously, uh, these five work streams are developed in, in, in parallel in order to advance in, in different ways, ways. The first axis is, is the first work stream is the design of the operating model of work and, and uh, the, the necessary roles and organization. The first tasks were related uh, to, for example, push 
so establish clearly uh, the different roles of, of the ISPO, of the Inertial Program Office, to, to define the operating and governance models, model together with the technical teams and product owners. Um, also, what we call to, to set what we call the Inertial Champion. Uh, this is it's a figure uh, that is is the focal point of the program office within the, the project no? As, and is a person with uh, high technical knowledge and, and expertise. Also to set the trust commit, trusted committers uh, were made official and, and also a career path for these trusted committers uh, so that everyone uh, will know how to, to become a trusted committer. Um, the, second work, the second work stream refers uh, to making the platform and, and the working suit operational and, and that everything on it is public. And here we have milestones uh, like migrate the existing code at the beginning to github.com. Uh, github.com was the, the code tool uh, selected. Also publish the way of working and the profiles and, and user policies for everyone. Uh, organize a, a suitable uh, repository structure, build the readme contributing files, etc. Also, for example, the, 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 in addition, the, the management and, and ticketing of the for the management and ticketing of the project, uh, Jira was established and, as the official tool. And here uh, we had to build a single board uh, for the entire organization so that everyone can know the backlog, the different tasks in, in progress, etc. And also to launch to launch a, a new confluence instance, which is the tool the, where we host the technical and functional docu documentation of the product. So in the third work streams, uh, work stream, uh, we work on on adapting each geography at, uh, to the operational and cultural level of, to this change. And for this, it, it's important that everyone in, in Europe have access to the same Microsoft Teams and and to foster communication. Also. Uh, we had sessions and, and workshops to communicate the roles and, and the operating model with both uh, POs and, and developers uh, so that everyone was aligned. Uh, in addition, we, we appointed a country focal point in each region in order to, to facilitate the work and, and develop this, this inner source way of working in, in each country. And uh, we published a, a, welcome, a welcome pack uh, that work as, as a starting kit for developers to make it easier for new joiners uh, to know how to work. Uh, the fourth work stream is already the development and evolution of the processes of uh, forking, contribution processes, code review, ICD, uh, etc. Um, and finally, the, the fifth uh, work stream is one of, of, of services that we offer from the program office. No? For example, uh, to develop a portal uh, that would work as, as the single gateway to, to projects and on every information, uh, so developers uh, don't have to go to different sites, and, uh, and also this works like an, an inner source intranet. Uh, in addition, uh, starting with Microsoft Teams and, and the portal uh, to beginning, uh, beginning to, to generate a, a real community of people interested in inner source. Also, uh, start with the with the extraction of metrics no? for, for, from the different processes to determine where are the improvement points. Another service are the training sessions with developers, uh, trusted committers, etc. And also some other issues such as uh, support to the definition of, of the legal model, etc. Uh, to follow the roadmap and, and progress of the project, we have three main ways. Uh, in the ISPO, we have a, a daily monitoring Kanban with a, a weekly review. Also, we have a, a bi weekly follow up with the director of, of technology in Europe. And we also work with the technical leads uh, of the project in, in a two month plan to certify that we, we, meet, we meet the objectives uh, that we, we set uh, for each quarter. And uh, where we are to finish, um, we have achieved a, a series of objectives uh, such as, uh, for example, uh, we have set the, the foundations of, of the, the new nurses community with more than 450 members from four countries. We also managed uh, to formally work on, on the github.com platform uh, with public uh, code within the organization and more with more than 200 people collaborating on, uh, on it uh, with a public public who is who for everyone. Uh, we have completed all functional and technical documentation of the product uh, and it's accessible, uh, complete, public, etc. In addition, the inner source uh, portal works as a single gateway to every project. 
regarding communication, uh, we have managed uh, to make the, the Microsoft Teams um, team work as the main channel between countries. Uh, we already have more than uh, 30 trusted committers uh, trying it in the role. Um, uh, and finally, we can say that uh, the WANA project has been deployed uh, successfully in two countries, uh, Portugal and Spain, and in, we are in the way to do it in, in another two, Poland and, and the UK. But also in, in this path, uh, we have discovered some blockers or, or retarders that we didn't expect, no? such as, for example, uh, we had a hard time to get the code published within the organization in an accessible way. Uh, and, and in fact, we had to open a task force with the local CISO. Um, we also had to manage uh, that forking could be done for security reasons and information privacy. Another problem we discovered was that it was not, it, it was no, not possible to access uh, the systems, the platform from non-corporate devices and most of our development team uh, was external with <laughs> non-corporate devices. Uh, it was also very difficult to get uh, the first uh, two Santander repositories published in, in open source mode in our GitHub instance, uh, public to everyone in the internet. I thought it didn't contain a source code. Uh, it's, it's only for, for templates and, and best practices, but itself is already an achievement. And also a milestone that we are working on is the licensing model and, and, and its fiscal impact uh, in countries, which is, which is complex. Um, just finishing, uh, I want to, to show you how our community is working from the portal that I mentioned before, which gives uh, access to all the resources for each initiative, uh, repositories, uh, dashboards in Jira, trusted committers, joint information, etc. Here uh, you have an example of a conversation channel uh, where people work on, on where we post a, a type of information about the project. And uh, finally, uh, it's, it's, end, it's the end. And um, I just want to, to thank our Viterkia partners from the support and service that are giving us on, on this path of adopting InnerSource and also the, the InnerSource Commons Foundation for giving visibility to the work we are, we are doing at Santander. And, uh, Nothing more. This is all. Thank you. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, Jesus, thank you. That that was wonderful presenta presentation. A lot of information there, and I know there'll be many questions on that. So thank you very much. Um, let's jump. Let's jump right into uh, Shashir. If you can uh, uh, share how Intersources has been jump started uh, at at Fidelity, and then we'll we'll move into a general discussion. And again, I'm sure there'll be lots of questions from everybody. Sure. Uh, hi, everyone. A pleasure to be speaking over here. Uh, and, and as the title says, right, right it's the beginning. So, so we are really at the early days of InnerSource at Fidelity. And there is a certain context, therefore, I thought I will probably start with uh, uh, by talking about the company. So the first thing, like uh, when uh, Fidelity International, the company that I worked with, uh, has got is into investment management. We do a lot of investment solutions and retirement expertise to institutions, to retail clients, as well as the advisors. And roughly, if you see like this, it's under management of $800 billion with uh, 2.6 million customers. I think uh, the important thing that we are seeing it over here is that the technology, if you see the technology of the 3000 staff that we are talking about is really spread across these 14 locations. Uh, with probably the major one being in uh, India, UK, and Dali and China, right? So, so it, it is a very different opportunity. It is a very different channel, something that was discussed in last presentation as well on how do we make most out of it. So now the way that I have structured the uh, this today's presentation is really talking about the past, present, and the future, uh, because I think it's important. Uh, uh, so somebody mentioned about the template to experiment. And that's what we are probably going to share. How did we experiment it and what were the learnings out of it and where we stand today and what we are eyeing in the future. So with that particular thing, I will, I will leave my hat of head of engineering because, uh, because 900 days back or roughly three years back when we started this particular inner source, few of the individuals came up and uh, they, they got introduced to the concept of inner source and they got excited about it and they wanted to do something about it. So as you can see, it was a very, very much a bottom-up kind of an approach that came into the picture. Uh, 
and therefore over a period of time we started with confluence pet bucket jira teams everything so so you can, you can imagine what we are using the tools for and and we started sort of creating an ecosystem for inner source again a very much bottom up but the positive thing was as part of the technology if you see like uh, the head of technology stuart he's very supportive of the ecosystem entrepreneurship and everything so that was the major support where we guys had the confidence that we can bring up a new concept within fidelity in a bottom up approach so what happened as a result of this particular approach we suddenly saw a lot of repos getting flourished we created the bit bucket uh, uh, project and a lot of people started creating the repos and as you can see whether it was ai or the innovation garage or a lot of cloud utilities and quite a lot of interesting things on quality as well and and just for 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 rest i have put them in the miscellaneous but quite important utilities kind of things coming over there and as you can see the kind of the uh, uh, how people were committing to it what's the curve so so there were definitely certain highs and then as you can see the, by 2021 things were fading out and i will talk about the past uh, about the recent past and how and what we are doing in that particular area so this worked quite well for us uh, because it helped to spread the awareness of inner source it was no longer an alien word people people were we did not have to break the barriers right if i look uh, today after 3 years it's a very commonly used word which everyone understands what inner source is it created a lot of excitement it was a vent out for many engineers because many times you are stuck in the technology that you're doing but suddenly inner source is giving you a platform where you can do something that you always wanted to do right so it was, there was a sense of accomplishment and so on so it was going on quite well but there were a few problems uh, most of the solutions that we saw in the earlier slide were not running into the production uh, the real collaboration was really not happening because not a pull request were coming not a lot of pull requests were coming there were no visibility into what is the open issues we had our limitations with the tools though we had confidence about uh, jira and few others but we really could not solve those problem because it was a part time effort that all of us were putting in there was no landing page and finally the kind of the tools that you need for the for the build pipelines and the feedback and the test cycles and even deployments uh, it had its own uh, challenges one intentional thing that we did was we kept a very very low governance on it to encourage people to come and participate so that we are able to break the barriers of letting your code be in public right so we kept a low governance uh, governance barrier while you are creating these projects so it came with its own pros and cons right you can easily imagine the cons of not having a great modularity or the readme's not every time pull request is being raised and so on so that was the story uh, now during this pandemic 20 now i'm talking about the recent past or, or the present sort of a thing as an organization we are a scaling momentum right whether it's about cloud we want to move by 2023 the asia 2025 by 80% of things on the cloud we have cross functional teams product culture coming in engineering setup the engineering function that i'm heading is just 5 months old so so all those things are happening and therefore we thought it's the right opportunity right opportunity right time to again fuel the movement of inner source but this time there was a bit of top down as well so so we encouraged all the bottom up people who were involved as well as the top down people to come in again uh, again get into this movement but this time we had the luxury of ecosystem we had the luxury of budget we had a tools tools a lot more maturity in the tools that we had and even ready to invest into that and and again sort of a uh, I, i won't say it's as matured uh, in a source office as it should be but it's just sort of uh, creating a governance simple governance around it and that's where we stand today uh, but what we thought was it's the right time to push in a source therefore what we started doing was we started doing a lot of communications over it uh, whatever we had uh, like what is in a source what we have done so far we spotted certain areas where we thought we could attract a lot of people across geographies across business units and i will talk about that in the next slide uh and and we started doing a lot of how to sessions what to do and so on this was all internal slightly fueled by the engineering but overall a lot of bottom up people coming together to do this and as a result what we did was we created sort of a brand for it we called it collaborative community platform because it was selling very well with our vision statement and we started talking about these modifiable reusable packages the developed packages which is really probably 20% of what we do and 80% is probably open source that we use 
So, so we started using the badges, the PR welcome, open source, and so on. And as a result, what really happened was something quite amazing. In the last four months, we have now 60 plus repositories with 32 plus contributors who are contributing. And these are very, very high grade quality uh, cloud solutions because that was the that was the problem statement that we lashed onto because everyone could relate to it. Right. This was the movement and, and, and it, it gelled so very well in terms of accelerating. So we created a lot of infra as a code because, as you can understand, in an investment management firm to use any of the functions that you're seeing, we have a lot of NFRs, right? Any company will have it. But for our, ours, it's the similar thing, whether it's about logging, whether it's about how do you do the audits, how do you do tra tracking, how do you do defect management, everything. So it was not as simple as using an infra as a code. We had to do a lot more. So you could see quite a lot of movement that we were able to gather because of this. And again, even if you see the activity chart, uh, whether it was in terms of the number of commits that were happening on these repositories or the other two, the engagement and the active users, where a lot of conversations were happening on the team's channels, even we discussed inner source commons, we got aware of it, we got in touch with inner source commons. We had quite a lot of meetings and meetings with, with many of the people who are present over here. So it has started generating a lot of excitement, a lot of, uh, a lot of people have started coming and in, pouring in, into these particular things. And, and again, if you see, we are sort of, these are all volunteers, but you can easily spot who are the trusted committers among this. We did not even knew the term trusted committers. We were thinking uh, product owners or something like that, but it was, it, but it's obviously becoming, uh, becoming quite, uh, quite obvious like who will be the trusted committers when it comes to this particular thing so it was great to see this kind of an evolution happening and that's our present so what we are now finally looking at is how do we how do we sort of get an escape velocity and move to the next stage the next stage is really about a scaling because what we did was we did a lot of reusable kind of a things cloud thing but we are still to target the products we are still to say like how does a product go into the inner source? What's the budget consideration around that? How do we do the appreciation and recognition? So far, we have not done anything except for uh, appreciating someone on the team's channel. So we need to figure out the mechanics for that. But important, uh, most important lesson in the last three years is like, how do we ensure there is sustainability in whatever we are doing? How do we create the right vehicles for the adoption as well? It's not only about contributing, but it's about adopting these you know, source library as well. So there are quite a lot of questions and we are trying to find solutions to that. And probably with that, I will try to pause in the, in the interest of time. Uh, and, and, and please let me know for any further questions. So, so it's a great journey. Uh, I think we are learning a lot in this community. Thank you. Shashir, thank you.